Hey guys, it's Drew with Gucci Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to have a CAC stickering submission that just arrived home. Did the 1927S in gem CAC. We're going to let you know in this video. We hope you enjoy. So about a year ago, we ended up buying a 1927S SOQ in Min State 64. We thought about sending it to CAC and we didn't send it to CAC. We thought, hey, there's some issue with the coin. We didn't think it would sticker. And then we sold it prematurely. And so what I did the other day is I looked up that cert number and I saw that the coin was stickered. And I'm like, man, we just, we passed up on thousands of dollars. We probably could have made a few more bucks on it. And we could have got it to a collector that really would have enjoyed it instead of wholesaling it out to a different dealer. And so this video is a little bit different. Instead of us trying to rely on ourselves sometimes, we have to rely on the people that are the professionals, the people that actually sticker the coin. So you're kind of put on edge. You know, you're holding up some money, you wanted to make sure the coin hopefully stickers, and if it doesn't sticker, you didn't want to waste all that time instead of you just being able to sell it in the first place. So there's that time versus money aspect of every single coin, especially with a high dollar coin like this gem 1927S Standing Liberty Quarter. And so, in this video, like we said, we're going to show you the whole CAC submission that we got back, plus that coin. So we hope you guys enjoy it, and we hope you guys learn a lot. If you guys are interested in coins for your collection, we do have wholesale days going on right now for our older inventory, which is discounted. And our newer inventory is fresh for you, so make sure to go check that out at AcousticCollectibles.com. Alright guys, the first coin I want to show you in this video is this 1916 Denver. It AG3. It's retoned on the obverse. I think that's what the collector and us decided together, but we wanted to see if it would sticker. It did not. And the rim's pretty gone on the reverse. I don't think it met grading standards, in my opinion, for a sticker, and that retoning kind of held it back also. Next coin, which is one of the wins in this video, is this 1912 Proof Liberty V nickel. Just a really nice coin. I felt it was undergraded when we talked about it in... A previous video and it came back with a gold bean has a little pleasant toning on the reverse a little blue something you kind of see on proof liberty vehicles a lot and it's in a doily holder too which is pretty awesome up next is a 1904 P Morgan dollar graded mint state 62 this uh, holder fell apart it used to be in an outer shell like this and I think someone just broke it off on accident they're very fragile but this one has some haze on it, and I think that might have held it back. As you can see, it's really filmy on the reverse. And they don't like their film. And uh, this one just didn't make the cut. Here's a coin we wanted a gold sticker, but it didn't. This is a 1943D MS66 Full Bands Mercury Dime. Really nice album toning, but I think there was too many hits. Little small marks in the fields on this coin and it held it back from a 67 or the gold CAC. Just a gorgeous coin though in terms of the way it looks and the toning and the holder and you know we probably don't make any money on this coin but just wanted to see what would happen with it. Then we have this interesting little red sticker. This is a 1908 No Motto $20 St. Gaudens. When you kind of angle it down there's a lot of film on the obverse of the coin. Just really chalky, really filmy. And when you take a look at the reverse, a little bit of film on the on the back side as well. They said that this, I think what AS means is altered surfaces. I'm not sure what they did to alter the surface of the coin, but I think that that's where all that haze might have, might have come from. Maybe they used some type of brush or they used some type of chemical. I'm not too sure what John means by altered surfaces, but one day I might be able to ask him. But definitely interesting they put that on there. Then we have this 1908S Indian. Great VF25 Brown. Did not sticker. Probably just didn't measure up in terms of grade. I don't see any distracting spots or any hits, as some of these might have. Read some of those Volt box holders. 
Then we have a 1943 Walking Liberty half, probably the same type of scenario here, just didn't measure up in terms of grade. There's a lot of tickiness out in the fields and some rather big hits um, on the Liberty skirt and up from 6 o'clock to about noon. It's a nice coin, but probably just not a great 66. Then we have another win here. This is a 1938D Buffalo Nickel, Great Men's State 67 out of the Volt Box. It did sticker, and you know, it's a tough coin to find in the Volt Box, I guess, and it's stickering as well is pretty nice. Has a little purple and blue toning to it, as most Buffalo Nickels might have. Um, and the strike is strong and everything like that, and so just a definitely uh, a nice beautiful coin. Then we talked about this coin in a previous video also, so 1859. Proof seated dime. Great proof 64. I think there's just too many uh, issues out in the fields, very hazy coin. Um, not sure if they view this as a problem coin or not. Then we have this 1885 Morgan dollar, Great Mint State 63. It has a 109 cert. I guess people collect those, and uh, it's close to the 108 cert. And this coin is very nice and flashy. Might be just too ticky out in the field, or maybe there's some hidden PVC. It just didn't measure up, I guess, in terms of grade for John and his team. And I guess something to talk about is that when you see older holders like this, um, you know, when you're talking about the the no motto, or you're talking about doilies. Some of these really might have been sent in a long time ago, and now you sending it in again doesn't really help the coin. I think that there's some coins that have been sent in many times, trying to see if they would sticker, and there's just some things that are so tough that they just hold them back every single time. And so when there's a fresh coin that's graded, maybe like this Volt Box coin, or um, a coin that's been in, in a collection for a long time and hasn't seen auction, those are the coins sometimes that sticker because most of the time no one cared about the sticker when they were in that collection. And here's one of those. So this coin was purchased in 19, uh, sorry, in 2021, uh, I think from David Lawrence. I didn't think they sent this coin to CAC and it's been in Louisiana probably ever since. Um, it's just a really nice original Hawaiian dollar. Great XF45. I was praying this coin sticker, this is our coin, and it did. I mean, just a beautiful, wholesome original. Extremely tough to find. I love the reverse more than the obverse and just a killer piece. Up next is this 1901 2.5, another altered surfaces coin, it seems. It's got a bunch of pudginess or haze on the obverse, just like the No Motto did. I guess they were just trying to make these coins look better than they were, and unfortunately, that's what happened to this coin. And uh, yeah, you wish you can get a, a sticker on every coin, but you can learn a lot from ones that don't sticker and acquire an eye for it. This one is a 108, it seems. Then we have this 1928 St. Gunn's Great Mint State 66. This coin, um, I just didn't think it met the grading standard for Mint State 66. It's just probably not, you know, a, a green sticker or a gold sticker. You know, I, a lot of these coins, I think that John's very tough on Saints as opposed to PCGS and NGC. And that's where a lot of the stickers just don't pop up, especially for higher grades like this. And if you bought this coin raw, this is kind of what I'm talking about, and you sent it into PCGS and it came back to Mint State 66, then I would say send it to CAC. But if someone else or some other dealer found this, sent it in to PCGS, sold it to five other dealers, Someone along the way probably sent this to CAC to begin with, so sending it again probably doesn't fix it, just because John's probably going to have the same exact thought process on this coin. Then we have this 1866 seated half dollar. It's approved 64. Maybe it's just too dark for uh, John and his team. It seemed like it was, when you take a look at the reverse, it's just too terminal toned. And maybe they thought it was moving towards more of an environmental and they just didn't want to sticker the coin. The last doily holder in this video is this 1870 Indian head scent, great MS64 red brown. A lot of brown on this coin, not a whole lot of red. 
and uh, maybe that's why it didn't sticker. I didn't see any glaring issues to why they would hold it back in terms of hits or scratches or, or you know things out in the field, but one day I'll get to understand all that. And last but not least, drum roll please, the big winner. Woo! This 1927S Standing Liberty Quarter Gray Main State 65 OGH. Talked about this in a previous video and it is now CEC approved. A gorgeous coin. There's a light hit underneath the eagle on the reverse. It's kind of hard to pick up, but I thought it would hold it back. But it's nice original toning on the obverse of the coin. The luster's nice. It's all there in terms of, of grade and originality. And uh, we were screaming when we saw this. So very good day. And uh, thank you guys for taking a look at all of these CEC coins. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the coins that we presented today. Pretty cool thing that happened with that 27S. We hope you enjoyed it. And subscribe because we're coming out with videos every single week. We want you guys to be a part. We'll see you guys in the next video.